few minutes ago at that point it was still open but as i move over here uh, to show you victory boulevard you're going to see some police officer vehicles they are now blocking access to victory boulevard mm. and you can see uh, obviously why you have that heavy smoke that is laying down onto victory boulevard which uh, is definitely a hazard for people who are going to be driving through and having to drive right into that dark thick smoke so for the time being uh, victory boulevard is now also shut down in addition to the orange line. That's the bus line that runs just on the north side of the Sepulveda Dam. That is shut down from Woodley to White Oak as this brush fire continues to burn. Still at about five acres is the official number that we're getting from the LA City Fire Department, which is the agency that's down there battling this fire. But I'm going to go ahead and zoom the shot out just a touch. We were talking about those homeless encampments and talking about how uh, we have uh, covered the number of homeless encampments that are in this particular location. And this shot that I have for you right now is a great juxtaposition shot. It shows you the flames here on the top of the screen. And as I tilt the shot down just to touch and zoom in, you can see just how close it is in proximity to one of these encampments. Again, we do, do not know at this point whether that is what caused this fire, but I can tell you just flying around at night in particular, uh, not only at this dam, but also at Hanson Dam, we do see a number of warming fires likely hunting coming from some of the homeless people that live in those encampments. Again, it's unclear if that's what caused today's fire here uh, near Lake Balboa, but you can see that the LA City Fire Department trying to do everything they can to get this fire under control. Yeah, and Eliana, we're getting some numbers from our I-team. As, as we were mentioning earlier, they've really been all over this story. The number of homeless fires in the last couple of years has increased dramatically. In fact, data from 2018 shows a 211% increase in the number of fires from the previous years. So th this is a big problem that LA firefighters have really been struggling with. They're now extinguishing almost seven fires a day that are started at homeless encampments or tents in neighborhoods across the city. And as you point out, we don't yet know the cause of this fire. John Keddies Klimak also mentioned, you know, perhaps it's a car that's backfired, but we do know that there are a lot of people living in an area that is simply not set up for it, Lolita. Right, and this all started as a grass fire. So it, 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 right now the indication is it sort of started in this middle there. So we know that much. It's about 3.30, 3.45 when this all began. Again, we are uh, near uh, North Balboa Boulevard and Victory Boulevard. We're in this area of Balboa Park in the middle of the park. Although Victory Boulevard is nearby, there are no structures that are being threatened and no formal evacuations there. But as we showed you earlier, now it's actually really difficult to see the encampments that we were seeing even minutes ago or the folks that were down there because of the thick smoke. As we're watching the water dropping helicopter go in, the firefighters go in uh, to try to stop this and they're trying to find obviously the cause later. But right now they're just trying to stop this from spreading. Certainly, and you certainly hope though too that people who have decided to make this area home were able to get out in time because because we're seeing such a widespread of flames in this area. And while resources are now directed at them, you, you certainly hope that no one is trapped in this area. We see the number of ground crews on the scene here. And how would you describe the, the progress, Eliana, from the firefighting effort? Let me pull the shot out because I think that's really going to give us the best answer uh, when it comes to that question. You can see that the the flames started on this side of the park. That would be the eastern side. So that was possibly where it initiated and then uh, was pushed over to the west again uh, due to the winds. They're not uh, too heavy, but just heavy enough to push the fire in the, this general westerly direction. And that is where you find a lot of the thicker brush, those palm trees that we were looking at before when we, when we arrived on scene. This is the area where they are, and I can actually see them there uh, just through the smoke. The, the flames have been extinguished in that particular area, but there's still a lot of other heavy brush right next to those trees, and the fire department is trying to keep it from spreading to that larger, thicker brush. If they can contain it to just the grass fire, that's relatively easy to extinguish. Uh, grass, mm -hmm. uh, grasses, of course, are very short, so the fire would essentially burn itself out after a few minutes, but what they're really trying to prevent 
important is to keep it from spreading to that larger brush, those larger trees. And more importantly, they're trying to keep it from jumping over yeah. the road. They want to use that road as a natural fire break to keep the fire from spreading to these adjacent uh, trees, this adjacent brush. But unfortunately, what we sometimes see is that the embers can be carried even a mile away. And so that's where the, the true danger lies, because I'm going to go ahead and zoom the shot out. You can actually see that there is a community of homes just north of here. They are within that one mile range. So there is that possibility that embers could spread. And that is exactly what they are trying to prevent. At this point, though, it does look like they're starting to get somewhat of the upper hand. But I still see a lot of active flame here at Lake Balboa. Yeah, we certainly do, Eliana. And you mentioned that road and that that can act as a, a natural break here in the flames. And it's so thick, it's difficult to tell, but it doesn't appear that it has yet jumped that road or ignited any of the brush on the other side. We do see a lot of smoke in that area, which makes it a bit tricky because that smoke is, you know, blowing across that road. We want to bring in Anthony on us again, talk about sort of the conditions here. It's been cool sort of at the beginning of this week. We're looking at hotter temperatures as we get yeah. through, but it's 87, so it's not so bad, but still. But uh, this is all vegetation. Though. Right, You can yeah. really see from this uh, helicopter shot here uh, how when you have that grass, it's very dry, of course, in the summer for us. Once that spark starts, those flames just go. And the reason Eliano is talking about this right now, if we can put us in a double box here, the wind speeds from Reseda to Van Nuys near the Sepulveda Basin are four to 13 miles per hour. That is not a strong wind, but it's enough of a breeze that you catch that grass on fire and it is just so easy to move and just and go. Uh, the temperatures are warm today, mm -hmm. uh, highs in the upper 80s, so that's very warm, uh, but it's not crazy hot. In fact, our average is in the lower 90s, so we're actually below average, but still that's enough heat with all the dry conditions. You just get a fire and it's really easy to go out. And humidity is actually fairly moderate in the 40% range. And Anthony, you often talk about fires creating their own little weather systems. And we are seeing a little bit of swirling in certain areas here where, you know, there's some thick, thick and dense brush. And, and you think what's happening is you get a contrast. And so while the air temperature is in the upper 80s, the fire is, of course, hundreds of degrees. And so because of that, what's happening is you get that contrast and so it creates a spin. And so very easily on these outer edges, and you're seeing that, you're, mm -hmm. you see the flames uh, twirl around. And that's why you can get these really small fire whirls on a small fire like this. Right. Of course, when you get a large fire, that can really turn into something dangerous for the firefighters. Uh, but what you're seeing is it's creating a contrast on those outer edges of creating its own weather because of the contrast in temperature. And even with those whirls, we can run into a situation of the embers then getting, you know, they can blow Jumping. from right. there, right? right? Especially when the winds are stronger. Yeah. So the good thing is with this particular fire is you're looking at four to 13 mile per hour winds. So while it is creating its own weather, it's not going to overpower it so much that it's going to just create something that's going to be just a big problem for firefighters and homes in the area. Uh, but you are seeing a contrast, but you multiply that. Imagine if there was really strong winds, this would be a much bigger problem, especially with all the fuel that's in place. And it does seem like the firefighters both on the ground are flanking in and around a certain area. And then you see the water dropping happening at around the same place, trying to contain what they can yeah. around that section, uh, you know. And we can see they've made yeah. some good made some progress. Leeway, yeah. Right and there. there again, look at the way the clouds, see the, see the moving that, there? You yeah. See that? There's the contrast between where it's dry uh, where the fire is not dry, where it's not on fire, where it's right. on fire, and you're getting a little bit of a whirl, but they're all staying around because they have the experience. They know what this fire is going to do, and they just need to basically put it out in that general area. And wow. so, pretty incredible uh, just the experience you're seeing with firefighters, or we know how to take care of this. Yeah. Right. I want behavior. to bring Eliana Moreno back in again and just to orient our viewers, we're talking about the main intersection here being Victory and White Oak. This is really Victory between Louise and Balboa and, and for those who are familiar with this area, it's a heavily traveled area both uh, with you know, obviously car traffic along Victory, but the park is very popular among runners, hikers, people who want to enjoy Lake Balboa. Uh, Eliana, are you with us? Yeah, back with you guys here. And as you were saying, this is a very popular park. And unfortunately, we also have a number of homeless encampments here in the area. There's one right there at the center of the shot. And I can tell you that we've uh, gathered some additional information about the homeless here in the area. We're hearing that when the fire broke out, the LA City Fire Department started evacuating some of the people that reside here. And uh, fortunately, though, we are hearing that none of them were injured, but there were a number of propane tanks that started going off 
uh, as a result of the fire. So there were a number of small explosions because of those early on. We're not seeing any of that right now. In fact, as you mentioned, it does look like the, this particular set of fire uh, fighters is uh, basically analyzing the situation at this point. But we still have the uh, aerial units here. We have uh, the fire uh, helicopter from the LA City Fire Department continuing to make water drops. This is not a fire where they're going to be uh, making a fire retardant drops. So they're just gonna focus on uh, dropping these uh, thousands of gallons of water on the fire to try to get it under control. Again, this is going to be burning on the uh, northwest corner of the Sepulveda Dam, very close to uh, the uh, Balboa Park, right off of Victory Boulevard, as you were saying. And as a result of this fire, Victory Boulevard is shut down in both directions from Woodley to White Oak. And so is the orange bus line. The bus line runs through this area just on the north side of the park but that is where you see these units from the LA City Fire Department they are staging on the orange bus line so uh, for uh, the time being that will be shut down and uh, the fire department will continue to tr try to get this fire under control which uh, as of last count was still at approximately five acres. And Eliana you mentioned the propane tanks that were going off I mean certainly we saw indication that th that could have been the case. We were seeing a lot of dark smoke and, you know, a lot of different areas of flames. Is there risk that there could be more propane takes in the area? Have you heard any, any chatter about that? Yeah, there still definitely is the possibility that there may be more. Uh, unfortunately, again, there's still a, a large number of homeless encampments in this area, and it wouldn't be out of the question for uh, there to be more than just a few. A few is what I'm hearing have already exploded, uh, but fortunately, it looks like at this point, there's not any in the direct path of the fire. It is burning now in this westerly direction. And as far as I can see, I'm not seeing any uh, additional encampments, encampments rather, uh, directly in the path of the fire. Fire, but we are seeing still a lot of heavy smoke and it's difficult to tell sometimes whether it's just the brush that is mm -hmm. burning or if in fact it is an encampment down there uh, because that smoke is so dark so thick and usually when it comes to brush fires once we start to see that white smoke that's when we know that the fire department likely has this under control but just as we start to see a lot more of that white smoke yeah. now we mm -hmm. have this explosion of black you smoke so in the middle of the shot there there is definitely something that is still burning it it may be more than just brush and it may in fact be some of those propane tanks. Yeah. And Eliana, are you seeing multiple fires or are they popping up in different sections? We saw some firefighters close to one, it seemed like extinguishing that, but if you pull out a little bit more, are you seeing like some pockets now in different places or is it one area itself? So it looks like it's just one big fire that started over here on the east side of the park, and then the wind started pushing it over towards the northwest. So everything is still kind of in this general direction. If I widen out the shot a little bit more, you'll be able to see that there's really no other spot fires uh, anywhere else, but I just saw the fire department actually do a water drop all the way over here on Victory right. Boulevard, and that's because some of these fires on Victory Boulevard on the south side of the street just started catching fire. They do not want it to go anywhere past this point so that's why they did that water uh, drop there on those trees so although this fire is generally in the same area one of the things that we were concerned about was having it jump the road which in this case would be the uh, orange line busway and unfortunately it has jumped because uh, those palm trees that I just yeah. looked at are all the way north uh, uh, north of the fire off of Victory Boulevard and as we look to it, it appears that there are people who are kind of gathered here right. watching it. This does not seem to me to be a good place to be standing. Well, in the last wide shot, that's why I asked the question, because I saw that there were people in cars mm -hmm. moving, even though there's a certain section where they're trying to keep people off the road. It is getting a little frighteningly close to certain people there as you in watch fact, it. In Eliana, if you push in there, doesn't it appear there's some flames on that um, brush? And uh, I'm sorry if you move back to where those people are standing and then a little bit to your right, it appears that one of those... Uh, that tree They're right there. Is, there's yes. some flames right, right there next that to that I'm person. Seeing. Yeah, and there's somebody standing there next to a tree that's now uh, got some good flame action going on it. I'm not even quite sure if that person even notices that. Oh, you see them walking away now. But that is sort of the concern that we, not sort of, that is the concern that we've been talking about with Anthony Giannis. Yeah. We've been talking about here. Just things can start in one particular area, but fire is unpredictable and as much as the science comes into play and we sort of know where they are and behavioralists know that part 
things like that can happen. For someone who is not equipped to know that, for someone who's just walking or being in that area, it's really difficult to know when something's going to spark, Anthony. That's a perfect example of spotting. Right. Because yep. you have, even though the winds aren't that light, right. you get a little a spark that just travels from where the heart of this fire is across the street. So you saw the palm trees, you saw the bushes, and all of a sudden you're standing there, and right next to you there's this small fire that's starting to develop, and, and you're there in it. Um, but another example of spotting again, you, this is right where the fire is, is the one uh, here. You got I-5 and the 101, a Sepulveda Basin here. Your temperatures upper 80s, humidity in the 40% uh, percent range, and those wind speeds 4 to 13 miles per hour. Not we crazy strong, but enough. Yeah, Anthony, 405, 405 and 101. 405, yeah. Yeah. 405, 101, and I just well, got some news now into our newsroom from the LA City Fire Department. The cause is still unknown, but the fire department does say that this is a known homeless encampment. It is a place that they know that they have been to prior and as we talked about before with the propane tanks there it is something that they keep their eye on yeah and an, an example of fires don't don't stay still where mm -hmm. that's wherever that fire started it caught the grass the grass moved it over to the trees I, I, I'm really interested to find out what the black smoke is from because that looks so different than everything else in the area and then you have where you saw the spotting where it was catching on fire in some of the palm trees uh, that are away from the heart of it and you saw the firefighters putting out the palm trees there yeah, and then as we know, uh, the, the threat of additional propane tanks catching fire in this area, and we've certainly seen these large plumes of very dark smoke, and then there's a you know likelihood that could be what's going on there as well. And we also uh, had someone in our newsroom call out to folks it's in that area. Fire. That is a, a very busy uh, area there. Um, we believe this is a car fire. Is that a car on fire here? Uh, Eliana, let's go to you first before I bring in what some folks in that area are trying to say. What are we looking at here? Anthony was mentioning that white, uh, rather that black smoke and what the possible source of that could be. So we, we moved on News Chopper 4 Alpha just a little to the east to get a better vantage point. And we do see that there is in fact a car on fire. So that is what's causing all of that thick black smoke. And we were talking about propane tanks earlier, right in the center of the shot, next to the vehicle, you can actually see a grill. So likely there's a propane tank in there. The grill hasn't caught on fire just yet, but I can only imagine that that's gonna be taking place here in the next few moments, new, new few moments rather. Again, that car is on fire right in the center of the park, and uh, likely you couldn't even see this car because of the brush that's uh, all around it. But for whatever reason, there is a car here right in the center of the park, and now that car is completely engulfed in flames. You see that there are some uh, fire department uh, personnel close by trying to do what they can with their single hose there. But this is a little community. You can see that there is a uh, what looks like some structures there, uh, possibly some uh, belongings, and it, this whole little area right in the center of the park is where we're seeing all of that thick black smoke. I'll pull out so you can see uh, exactly where that was situated. So the fire started on the right side of the screen, made mm -hmm. its way over to the left. That's a north uh, westerly direction, and right in the middle of all of that is where we see this uh, little community with that car now fully engulfed. And, you know, for the, the people in this area, Victory is an incredibly busy street, and uh, our executive producer upstairs has been making some phone calls and spoke with the people at One Generation Child Daycare, which is on Victory and really just next door to this fire. They did not have any children present today because teachers were working, but the teachers chose to leave early because the thick smoke in that area is causing so many problems. Yeah, and they said that police told them at, the point, at that point that they were okay, but they took the precaution of leaving anyway just to be able to, to make it out. And we should mention also, also that closing any part of Victory Boulevard at 430 in the mm -hmm. afternoon is to say the least, a very big deal. Um, it's something that's going to maybe tie up some traffic in that area. So we're also monitoring that as we see this, uh, you know, these flames still going and the, the explosion yeah. there, a pop there that you saw uh, as it's happening uh, with grills in the area, propane tanks, a known homeless encampment now confirmed by LA City Fire. This is some of the, uh, it, place that we showed you multiple homeless camps from, you know, for the first time drone footage we showed you just yesterday of this kind of thing. So trying to piece this all together and figure out what it is. But at this point, just keeping those flames uh, down intact, keeping this contained to this one area is really what firefighters are striving for. And it's a challenge for firefighters because here they appear on scene of what initially is reported as a brush fire and they're working away. And well, now they're dealing with propane tanks exploding, cars catching fire. You've got gasoline in that car that that poses another threat and we continue to watch 
this sort of billow and grow, and we know from Eliana Moreno it's already jumped over to the other side of the road here. Eliana, how are things uh, looking from your perspective? Looks like this car is fully engulfed at this like point. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like that's really what gives us the best picture of what is going on here. Uh, again, we have uh, what looks like the starting point on the right side of the screen. So that's going to be on the east side of the park. And then the winds pushed it in a northwesterly direction. All of that area there has already burned. And now we're just focusing on the essentially where that car fire is going up. And you can also see that there's uh, some additional property uh, likely belonging to a homeless person. All of that is gonna be flammable material. It's all gonna go up. There's really not gonna be any way to save any of it. And the fire continues to burn though. And it, now it's spreading to some of those taller trees, which was what we were concerned about, that it would get to the palm trees, get to some of those taller uh, vegetation. If they could have just controlled it with the grass fire, that's, a, that's an easier fire to fight. The grass fire will essentially burn itself out but when it gets to mm. these taller trees that's where the real danger lies and we were talking about keeping the fire on the south side of the orange busway unfortunately uh, as we saw the fire did jump over the road all the way to victory boulevard where we saw some of those trees go up in flames and there's also a community just north of the park that's where we saw all of those people standing around and in yes. fact they're still standing around and that's that community of homes just on the north side all of those residences are not threatened by the fire there is no structure protection in place they are not in jeopardy of catching fire but you can only imagine if you live in those homes and you have all of this dark thick smoke coming over your home. I can only imagine that it, it could be very frightening, but I just, I'd like to uh, confirm with them that at this point, their homes are not threatened. Victory Boulevard, though, a major thoroughfare through their community is shut down, though, from White Oak to Woodley, as is the busway. That's the orange line. It runs through the same area, just on the south side. That is also shut down for the time being, while the LA City Fire Department continues to battle this fire, not only from the ground, but also from the air. And we want to talk about, as we're looking at that area, maybe bringing in Conan Nolan, who's up in our newsroom, has a really good information about what what is up in that area and what you know what could be threatened uh, in that in that Sepulveda Basin. Hey, Conan, are you with us? Yeah. Uh, so a little bit of background for some people that are newcomers. Since 1941, that's when the Sepulveda Basin was developed. Remember, this is part of the LA County Flood Control System. Massive floods in the 1930s, 1938, hundreds of people died, and as a result, they wanted a place to put floodwaters so they could then carefully let it down the L.A. River. And that's what this basin is all about. It's huge, and there's not supposed to be any development there because uh, it is used, it's frequently underwater during the mm. winter seasons. So you've had a tremendous amount of, uh, you know, it, there's a wilderness area there. Uh, there are a number of parks. There's a Japanese garden, a wildlife refuge. There's Woodley Park. There's even a model aircraft field. All outdoor recreational sites. There's nothing that's built there because, again, much of it is underwater. This past winter, though, of course, we had a tremendous amount of rain. So there's a tremendous amount of brush, which does two things. It gives you uh, plenty of fuel for a fire like this. But it also camouflages those who would want to use it as an encampment. And that's what we've been talking about now. And one other thing I, I might point out here that we don't know how this started, uh, but I can tell you two uh, offices that are watching this coverage very carefully. One of them is the Los Angeles City Attorney's Office. Uh, the other is the legal office for the petitioners trying to invalidate an agreement with a city or a, a a, actually a court ruling mm -hmm. that requires the city to ignore city laws about moving the homeless out of places like this uh, because uh, w what part of the lawsuit that may be taken up by the U U.S. Supreme Court is that that agreement is uh, setting up a, a threat to the public health and safety with things like this. I, I, I can also guarantee you that it is not legal to have propane tanks or to have um, barbecues in the middle of the Sepulveda Basin. And yeah, again, in fact, we know I was going to say that using open flames in public spaces, including encampments, is a violation of the fire code. And the LAPD has told the I team that they've issued just seven citations for these violations this year, even though our cameras have captured 
hundreds of open fires around uh, tent encampments throughout the Los Angeles area. Yeah, this has been a month-long investigation by producer uh, Amy Corral and uh, reporter Joel Grover on this very issue that pertains to all of L.A. County. In mm -hmm. fact, on our website right now, NBCLA.com, you could even map out the number of homeless fires that firefighters had been seeing for all of 2018. And it really covers a vast area because we are talking about a juxtaposition of a couple of things, right? We have the homelessness issue. We have, you know, hot weather. We have fires burning. We have folks, you know, not being able to afford living in a certain area and then these fires that they're not supposed to uh, be burning um, all of this kind of coming together and we're hearing this from through the I team through a lot of different areas it's not just in one particular about fires that are coming up and residents not being able to do anything about it for folks in encampments like well, this one. It is a major safety issue and when something like this happens it, it certainly as Conan mentioned draws a lot of attention and we know that people are going to be looking very carefully about this. Go ahead, Jack. And Anthony, uh, you're with us again. What are you noticing? Well, one thing that, that's striking to me is this is not normal fire behavior. Firefighters would come in here if there was a grass fire that just so happened you're dealing with the brush, you're dealing with the grass, uh, you're containing it, and you're taking care of it. But what you're seeing is it looks like they took care of all the brush, they took care of all the grass, but you have vehicles, you have propane tanks, you have all this extra debris in an area that's not supposed to be there. Mm -hmm. And so suddenly this is a completely different fire that you need to attack and that you need to take care of. I mean, this you're putting water on this car and it's not doing anything to put it out. This, the smoke is completely black and so it, it really is a challenge for firefighters when you have your fire models, if you will, of how you're going to attack this and take care of it to protect homes across the street, to protect property, to protect lives, and all of a sudden there's this element of we didn't know, or they probably did, but there's this element that these things aren't supposed to be there and it totally changes how you attack and fight a fire now. Yeah, right. it's very yeah. challenging. We're, and we're going on an hour now of them trying to fight this fire that started at 345, up to 100 uh, folks there in those homeless encampments. They're trying to relocate them at the time. We know from uh, LA Fire that they don't have the cause just yet, but this is a known homeless encampment, and that there have been confirmations of propane ga gas tanks exploding. And we've seen them explode. Eliana, we want to bring you back in and, and ask you if you can show us traffic conditions in the area. We've talked about Victory, this major thoroughfare being shut down. Is this thick smoke affecting other routes and, and other areas as people are trying to make their way home? Yeah, let me go ahead and zoom the shot out so that we can look at some of those roads. I'm going to show you uh, Victory Boulevard, which is going to be the first major street there just on the north side of the Sepulveda Dam. And I'm going to move the shot over to the east so we can see some of the traffic that is starting to build. All of those cars, they're trying to go westbound, but as you can see, the traffic is already pretty heavy. They're being forced onto Balboa Boulevard, so I'll show you that street next. That's going to be uh, Balboa Boulevard essentially runs through the middle of the park, mm -hmm. and you have all of that traffic that is starting to mount going northbound on Balboa as you approach Victory. Anyone who is in the area though is going to see this large plume of smoke so they will likely be able to put the two together and figure out that it is because of this fire that is burning in the area. You can definitely smell it as well. Uh, fortunately though it does look like the, the plume of smoke, of smoke rather is starting to go down in size uh, compared to what it was when we originally arrived on scene. We fly out of Whiteman Air Airport, which is located in Pacoima, near where the 5 and the 170 meet, we could see the plume of smoke as soon as we took off. And so I can tell you that uh, comparing that to then to what it is now, it is starting to look a lot better. But unfortunately, we see that there's still a lot of debris here in the uh, park that is continuing to burn, uh, debris such as uh, the belongings there of uh, of possibly one homeless person, if not more. And we also have this car fire that continues to burn. You mentioned it earlier. There's, uh, of course, likely going to be gas in the car and then the tires. That's when we uh, we saw a few minor explosions. That was because of the tires. And I continue to watch that grill because I'm just waiting for it to go up in any moment because it likely does have a propane tank inside. Uh, I'd also like to add uh, some additional information about the homeless people that were in the area. Uh, we've uh, gotten a word from our assignment desk that when the fire broke out and officials arrived on scene, they evacuated approximately 100 homeless people from the area where the fire is burning. There are homeless uh, service advocates uh, uh, that are on their way to assist those people with finding other uh, shelter for the night. 
All right, Eliana, thank you. We want to bring in uh, Chief Sam D. Giovanna from the Verdugo Fire Academy. Chief, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, as you look at this and, and what has evolved here in the past hour, what, what are your thoughts? Well, I think what Anthony brought up was a very good point. You know, when we respond on a typical grass fire, we're, we're going on a grass fire. And then when you come into these homeless encampments, it's a different ballgame. Our, our number one priority is life safety. So we have to make sure that who's ever in that encampment is evacuated safely. And then now we have the risk of whatever they have in their encampment, the cars, the tents, or whatever they're in, storing in there, the barbecues, the propane tanks. So it, it's, it's a whole new challenge. And as you know, we just covered this. I was down in Skid Row with Joel a couple of weeks ago. And, um, you know, this is something that isn't going away. And it's, and it's certainly a concern and it throws the dynamics and a change in it for us as firefighters. And Chief Sam, how did you do approach this? I mean, we saw actually this particular car, right, Carolyn, was when there was a pop of a propane tank. Firefighters are very close to these structures, these, you know, different things out there. How then do you approach this as a firefighter? Well, obviously with caution, because you don't know. We don't know what is stored in there. It's kind of like a garage fire. We don't know yeah. what people have stored in their garage, and it could be anything. But the other thing that compounds this problem is there's not a lot of fire hydrants. It's not like a neighborhood where you have a domestic water supply where we can tap into fire hydrants and have a water source easily available. A lot of times in big open areas like this, we have to shuttle water in either from other engines or through our water tenders. So it, it, it's, it's, it's complex very yeah. much. And certainly adding water to the propane fires here isn't necessarily going to put them out, is it? No, sometimes the best thing we can do is let those propane tech tanks just let them burn wherever they're venting. And if they're burning, just let them burn. Keep everything cooled down around them. You really don't want to put the, the propane out right away because now the fire's out, but the gas is leaking around, and then it, you know, settles around in the area and can find an ignition source and you have a, even bigger problems. And we're really at the beginning sort of a fire season here. We haven't yet seen the worst of it with respect to temperatures and winds and Santa Ana conditions. As Anthony mentioned, we're so fortunate that the winds are relatively light today, but still obviously huge risk out there for everyone involved in trying to fight this. We're now uh, kind of zoomed in here on a shot of the firefighters who are on the ground, and it looks to me like they're kind of just standing back a bit here. Yeah, I don't have a visual right now on it, but, you know, if they know that there's possibly propane tanks or other things that are creating an um, a, a extreme danger to them, um, if they've evacuated everything, they may just let some of this burn because I don't know what's in there, and they may not either. Right, and then some of these areas, Chief Sam, are these areas that you all are monitoring? You just mentioned that you went with us to uh, different uh, encampments in and around the area looking for, you know, things that might be harmful or, or predicament for not just firefighters, but for folks that live around these places. Are these some places that are being monitored now by the fire department? Well, most fire departments do monitor and very, very aware of the homeless encampments. But remember that these are transients and what's here today could be gone tomorrow and relocated to another part in the city. So they're pretty mobile. So, um, you know, what you feel you're familiar with today two days, three days, a week later, may be totally changed. Yeah, we, we had, uh, Chief Sam, some remarkable drone footage that we shared with our viewers just last night that showed how developed this area was with encampments, uh, a variety of tenting, and, and we've now confirmed more than 100 homeless people living in this small area here where these flames have really now taken hold. Yeah, yeah, and um, again, you know, this isn't going away. I, this is a, another... Um, crisis that we have to contend with. And like you said, the Santa Ana winds aren't really even happening. I even drive mm. through sometimes in the areas where I live in Orange County, Laguna Beach, Laguna Canyon, and I'll see people in the hills. And I just think, what's going to happen when the Santa Ana's blow? Are we going to have another Laguna Beach, remember, back in, yes, what, 93, yeah. 94? You know, mm -hmm. it, it, it's just sitting there waiting to happen. And Chief Sam, we talk about homeless and camels, but just for everyone, can you just tell us what is, you know, against or violates fire code in terms of public spaces, fires that are in open flames in those public spaces? Well, every city's going to have a different set of codes and, and requirements to it, but you really should not be having open uh, flame in, in these open space areas. It really is prohibitive. You really should not. Most areas, it's against the law, so it really should not be happening. And it's hard to stay on top of it. You can go in there and tell them, no, you can't have this. Turn around, and that night they could be you know, having open flame with barbecues or things to keep themselves warm. So you just... 
it's just um, it's a tough one because you know, like I said, you could go in there and enforce it, and, and two hours later they're back doing what they were doing earlier. All right. Well, Chief Sam, thank you so much for coming on board with us and talking us through this chief uh, fire chief Sam Di Giovanna from the Verdugo Fire Academy. We always appreciate your insight and expertise. And once again, we are about an hour into this fire at this Pulvita Basin. It's started as a grass fire, but we see this in uh, fire department has already confirmed that this is a known homeless encampment. The cause is not yet known, but they're de dealing with propane tanks. Um, exploding and the like as you see the fire still burning. We're going to continue to monitor this through our five o'clock hour, but for now, moving on to more developing news. Yeah, we want to be sure to get uh, this story to you. Are you a Capital One credit card holder? If so, you might be among the 100 million people whose personal information was exposed following a massive data breach. It is one of the largest reported data breaches ever. Yeah, a consumer reporter joins us now. Randy Mack is here to tell us more, Randy. Yeah, a lot of times these things happen anonymously. This time, police think they know what's happening because there has been an arrest made in this data breach, which is allowing investigators to sort of retrace the steps of the hack. But there is still considerable amount of risk for people, for consumers, because once your personal account information is out there, there's really no telling who's seen it. Capital One working to notify more than 100 million credit card applicants in the U.S. No. Yeah, that's, I told Gil we were at, they had added free on and he said that he had done that before in the past too and it didn't make a difference. Sure, we're, uh, they're not using our shot right now, so go for it. Uh, they're not using our shot right now, so you go for it. Yeah, it looks like the uh, this side we were on is better, the one we were on ori originally, because you can't really see the car from this side.
Okay, five minutes until my death. Oh, really? Oh, the one with the logo? Perfect. Mike, level four, news chopper four alpha over Lake Balboa, one, two, three. Chuck, Colleen, the fire is approximately five acres in size. At least that's the official number that we've gotten from the LA City Fire Department, though that acreage may have grown. We're focusing here essentially out at the center of the fire where you can see that there is what appears to be a homeless encampment. There's a firefighter there with a, a hose trying to do what he can to cool this fire. And then you have that car fire right in the center of the shot. Unfortunately, this area here near, uh, near Balboa Park in the Sepulveda Dam in the Lake Balboa area does have a number of homeless encampments and when this fire broke out at approximately 3 30 in the afternoon there were at least a hundred homeless people who had to be evacuated by the LA City Fire Department fortunately there are no injuries to report to any of the homeless people or to the fire department personnel but I can tell you that this fire has burned a large portion here of the park the fire appears to have started near the baseball fields on the east side of the park and then made its way westbound in a northwesterly direction. You see the burnt scar there all the way to where it is uh, still burning here closer to the orange bus line. And unfortunately, those flames crept over the bus line
line making their way very close to Victory Boulevard where some of the trees caught on fire over there. I can tell you that Victory Boulevard as well as the Orange Busway are shut down at this time from Woodley to White Oak. The buses are not making their way through and the Balboa station is currently shut down. The cause of this fire is still under investigation. Again, here in the Lake Balboa area, approximately five acres have burned. Chuck, Colleen. And uh, Liana, we know this is directly across the street from Birmingham High School there. Uh, you talk about Victory Boulevard being shut down still. What about traffic in the other streets around the area? Because of the closures on Victory Boulevard, as well as on the Orange Busway, some of the neighboring streets, Colleen, are going to be heavily impacted. So you have Balboa Boulevard, which essentially runs through the Sepulveda Dam here. And that's the street that I'm focusing in on here. You see all of those cars, they're waiting to go northbound uh, on Balboa from uh, approaching Victory, rather. And you can see that there are heavy delays in that direction. And this street here, that's going to be Victory Boulevard. Those are the cars that are attempting to go west heavy delays in that direction as well. So all of the streets here in the general area are going to be heavily impacted due to this fire as fire personnel are using some of the streets to stage some of their units. And it is five o'clock. There are a number of people who would typically use Victory Boulevard instead of taking the 101 freeway to avoid some of that traffic. But I can tell you that this afternoon, it looks like the freeway is going to be a better bet instead of taking some of these alternate surface street routes. That fire has been putting out a lot of acrid smoke in the area, and of course it blows in the, whichever way the wind is going. So let's find out about that as we go over to Fritz Coleman right now. Fritz? All right, Chuck. Well, the three elements of weather we look at when we're watching fires is the temperature, the relative humidity, and the wind. And all three are being fairly cooperative this afternoon as we look at a couple of sites near the fire area. Upper 80s, it's warm but below normal temperatures. 41% relative humidity and 35% relative humidity at Van Nuys Airport, not bad. This is a combination of the monsoon flow coming up out of the southeast and also the afternoon typical marine layer increasing the humidity. And winds are not bad. They're out of the south southeast at 4 at Reseda, out of the south, southeast at 13 at Van Nuys. And this is blowing the smoke up into the northwestern end of the San Fernando Valley for you folks up in that area that may experience that. And although the winds are relatively light comparatively, we have to say that it doesn't take much to cause spotting. We saw it earlier. We've had some very wet winters. The grass replenishes itself very quickly the following warm season, and the fire can spread quickly due to spotting downwind that would be blowing toward the northwest. We were seeing that this afternoon very close to Victory Boulevard, very close to the Orange Line bus way. And so even though this is not that volatile situation, spotting is very easy. And, and surrounding the fire area, you have a lot of very dense commercial and residential area. North of Victory Boulevard's big commercial area up where Colleen was mentioning Bur uh, Birmingham High School. And so we, we want to keep this thing contained in the basin. And we'll keep an eye on it for you this afternoon. All right, Fritz. Now, other news. Police have a suspect in custody now. They are trying to locate the woman he is accused of kidnapping, or suspected at least. Question is, where is he? Where could he have gone during the 18 hours between her disappearance and when he was finally, he, the suspect here, was finally arrested? NBC4 is Patrick Healy live in Monrovia with more on the suspect and the search for Amanda Custer. Patrick. And there is growing concern, Colleen, for Amanda Custer. Now, the suspect's own mother told police she saw him putting a woman into the hatchback of his Prius here Monday morning. That is the vehicle that was found today in downtown. He was there, but still missing is the off and on girlfriend who we've learned had already stood to testify against him from the previous time he allegedly assaulted her. The discovery of the suspect vehicle, suspect still inside, a promising breakthrough in the search for 31-year-old Amanda Custer, last seen with her 27-year-old boyfriend, Robert Camus. He allegedly putting her in the Prius's hatchback luggage area outside the Monrovia home of his parents Monday morning. Uh, she has not been uh, seen or heard from since yesterday morning. Uh, we are very concerned for her well-being. This morning, the Prius found parked 20 miles away in downtown L.A., Camus initially refusing to come out until tear gas was deployed. But no sign of Custer, only a tarp in the back. The big question, where had he taken? I think that's the CP. There's news vans down there.
Okay, sure, let me... Hold on. just a moment. I'm in the backup, so I gotta check my phone. Victory and Louise. Oh, okay, I see Victory and Louise on my map. Okay, just a moment. So Victory and Louise has to be right around here. That's Victory and Balboa. Yeah, so Victory and Louise is just one major over here. Near the skate park. Yeah, so right around here. Jim, are we able to fly over to Victory? There, yeah, he wants to see Victory and Louise. I can kind of see it from here, but I'm kind of obstructed by the street. Uh, by a building, sorry. Alrighty, Jack on the microwave, we're at Victory and Louise. Assignment desk, uh, we're at Victory and Louise. Nothing other than a traffic closure. This is Victory and Louise right here. I checked some of the lots, uh, but there's no news vans in the lots. It looks like it's just regular cars. It's next to the skate park. Here's a victory at Balboa. We've got another closure there. But no news vans. Sure. Yeah, so the only ones that I'm seeing are the ones that are in that lot that I told you about originally, the one with the ABC7 truck. Uh, this is Balboa and Victory next to the baseball fields. So just west of Balboa, south of Victory, next to the baseball fields, just on the north side of the fields.
Are we okay on fuel? Yeah. Yeah, all right. An hour. Okay. Jack, if you can hear me, we have about an hour. Gil says there's smoke showing at Hanson Dam. So let's see. That's it. Oh, okay. It it sounds like they're gonna get under control. Slow moving. Let me text him. I'm gonna try to raise the volume on the IFB around the 161. Okay, I think that'll do it. Are we alone? One more, right? <laughs> You're like a fine wine. <laughs> Let me. It's, yeah, they lost everything they had. Yeah. Assignment desk from Alpha on the 161. Hey Jack, uh, I just texted you, we're hearing an, uh, about another little fire at Hanson Dam. Uh, do you want us to stay here or go check that one out? There's white men. There's the dam. Yeah, tip four, we'll uh, go look at it. Tip four, Jack, we'll go peek.
Bravo C Alpha is moving towards Pacoima. Ten four, thank you. 